I will uh, recognize the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green, the ranking member, for his opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank the staff for the outstanding job it has done in providing us with intelligence. I'd like to also thank the witnesses for appearing today. Mr. Chairman, we live in a world where financial and technological innovations present greater access and convenience for the American consumer. Unfortunately, this also provides the doer of fraudulent deeds greater opportunities to perpetrate crimes on consumers. In 2013, the automated clearinghouse processed approximately 22 billion transactions worth about $38.7 trillion. As innovative technologies evolve to benefit consumers, innovative methodologies must also evolve to protect consumers. Fraud detection and prevention methodologies are good for both consumers and businesses. Undetected fraud can bankrupt a consumer and put a business out of business. Today we will examine the relationship between banks, their business associates known as processors, and consumers. And in so doing, I think it appropriate to use at least one very elementary example so as to give some clarity to persons who may be watching who are not familiar with this process. Uh, typically, uh, with a simple example, we would find that a person sitting at home uh, is approached by a business that would like to have a person make a purchase. Let's assume that this is a telemarketer. This telemarketer uh, will present the consumer with a product. If the consumer makes a purchase, that purchase is handled by a processor. A processor would be the company that works with the telemarketer. The processor receives the payment. The processor will then take the payment and deposit it in a bank. That bank then becomes the means by which the payments are paid to the telemarketer. And once these payments are made, let's assume that the consumer concludes that there has been an overcharge. A chargeback can occur. The chargeback is called to the attention of the bank. Uh, the consumer gets redress. The question becomes this, is a bank required or should a bank be required to keep a record of chargebacks? And if the record is maintained of chargebacks, would one incident of a chargeback indicate anything more than a mistake? But if 10,000 chargebacks occur, would that indicate activity? And if activity occurs, should activity be investigated? And if activity is investigated and is found to be fraudulent, should the bank have some responsibility if it knew that the activity was occurring but did nothing? Uh, there are serious questions to be answered. I believe we have capable, competent, and qualified witnesses here today who can help us answer these questions. The question also occurs as to whether or not a bank has a duty to perform due diligence as it relates to the business associates it has who are doing business with other businesses. And if it does have the, uh, the, the requirement to perform due diligence, can that due diligence be outsourced to a processor who does business with a telemarketer? And if it is outsourced, are there consequences associated with it? What level of due diligence must the processor employ? Does it have the same level of due diligence placed upon it as the bank? And can a lack of due diligence by a processor in some way impact the liability of the bank that it's doing business with? We really should take a close look at these questions, and we really should examine the difference between an incident and criminal activity. One occurrence, an incident. Thousands of occurrences, can be concluded to be activity. Should activity be investigated, and if so, should the banks provide intelligence such that the activity can be appropriately investigated? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I look forward to hearing the answers to these and many other questions from the witnesses that we have today, and I will yield back the balance of my time.